church seems to be a good place to tell stories, for it's here that we come as we write our own. It's here that we make our wedding vows and it's here that we bring our children to be christened and it's here that we gather to say goodbye to our loved ones and hear their stories retold. So I thought I'd share part of my family story with you today. So let me tell you about my granddad, my granddad Ernest. He lived a very long and happy life. Some of it lived with me and at my childhood home with mum, dad and my brother. Grandad survived both the First and Second World War and outlived one of his children. Amongst his treasured possessions was a sepia picture of his wife. The picture was taken when his wife was a child and it's very much of its time. And although I never knew my grandma, I remembered the picture quite clearly. Why? because it was in three pieces and it was always kept safe in Grandad's wallet. After Grandad died, with the help of some modern technology, we were able to put the three pieces back together again and for the first time, my family were able to see the whole picture. And yet, despite its completeness, I will never know the memories confined in the picture. But for my mum... The picture is not just about the picture as it was or as it is now. For mum, it's about seeing the picture in a new light. It's about life, a life lived and a life loved. Another treasured possession of my granddad's is a death penny. Death plaques were given to the next of kin for those men and women whose deaths were due to the First World War. It's in memory of Albert. Sadly, I know very little about Albert, other than he was my granddad's brother. The plaque doesn't give us any clue. No rank is given, as it is was intended to show equality in sacrifice. However, I do know that my granddad served in India. Granddad was in the artillery, the 29th Division, a division that assembled in Egypt for, before heading to Gallipoli. We, the family understand, believe that my granddad was returned to the UK on health grounds from Gallipoli. You know, I wish I had listened and learned more from my granddad, but at the time I think it was viewed that war stories were something to be avoided. My granddad rarely spoke of them, but every year on Remembrance Sunday, as he remembered the precious stories of his past, there was a stillness about him. He was sombre. But above all, he was keen that we remembered that we looked back to help us in looking forward. There are many stories to tell and they are only possible because of a larger story, one which the church retells throughout the course of the year. It is the story of the love that God has for each and every one of us, the love that inspired God to become as small as the most vulnerable living thing, an unborn child. The love that enabled Jesus to heal and break down barriers of class and gender and even religion. The love that saw him hang from a cross in pain and shame and still be able to speak words of forgiveness. When Jesus hung from the cross, he wasn't just laying down his life for those who couldn't care less about him. He was laying down his life for those who hated him. On Remembrance Sunday, we gathered at St Faith's with our own memories, some painful, others full of hope and thanks. And as we gathered, we had the chance to add our stories to the greatest love story of all. On Remembrance Sunday, the sacrifices our families and friends made, the sacrifices we have made are held together by the sacrifice that Jesus made. So we remembered. We remembered to honour those who gave their lives, those in the armed forces and those who died protecting others. It was a chance for us to remember with gratitude the way in which each person served and gave their lives 
so that we can look back with all that was lost and say, we see you. We see your story, your sacrifice, your pain, the loss of your life on those who loved you. We see you and we are grateful for what you gave and we are sorry that there have been people affected by wars since you died and are still living without peace now. And in seeing you, we also see all those who are currently serving in order to keep the peace you fought for, who are protecting and helping us and others, all who work hard to make those who are enemies friends. And we see hope. We see the hope that those who died in the First and Second World Wars had for the future, the hope we are living now. And we thank you for trusting us to be hope-filled people of true and lasting peace.